Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Kim Duramo. Welcome to Mind Body TV. Today I am going to be sharing about EFT tapping. We're not just sharing about EFT tapping, but we're going to be doing a lot of EFT tapping for emotional release. And for those of you who don't know me, I'm a physician, but very, very highly intuitive and can read people's energies, be aware of what's going on, know exactly what's keeping them stuck or sick or in lack or depleted or whatever. And it's really, really easy for me to just hone right in and help you release what's going on. One of the ways I love to do that is with emotional release techniques and EFT tapping is one of my favorite. It's super easy to use. You can do it anywhere. So stay tuned because we're going to be going deep to set you free. This is one of the biggest things that creates physical stress, physical illness. Um, it's been shown to relieve everything from anxiety, PTSD, to chronic pain, to chronic fatigue, anxiety and depression, autoimmune disorder, thyroid disorder, all kinds of things, infertility, it is amazing. So I'm super excited to be sharing this with you today. Hello everyone who's joining live. Welcome, I always love hearing where you're joining from, Ali from San Francisco. I've been loving being in the Tapping Summit. So this week, or for this 10 days, the Tapping World Summit, it's their 11th year. This is one of my favorite events of the whole year. And definitely my favorite place to really learn about using EFT, how easy it is, and how you can apply it to everything. Um, and that's going on this week. You can join for free. Um, I'm going to put this in the comments. Here is the link for the tapping summit in case anyone um, didn't get that uh, link. Sorry. <laughs> um, so that is going on for this week. They're all free when you listen. Like even if you just tune in for 20 minutes, I can pretty much guarantee you're going to have a profound experience and um, a usually really big emotional release. It's, it's a really, really well done summit. My talk was live yesterday. Um, so they've completed that. So if you, and I know people loved it. It was awesome. It was a really, really good one. It was about using tapping for anxiety. Um, and you know, this year they've done like the best of the best where all the last 10 years they've now taken the best of the best ones, the most popular ones and put them into the program. So if you purchase the program, you'll have mine, even though it already aired. But even if you don't purchase, you have each one each day, you'll have 24 hours to listen to it. Definitely worth it. I think it's pretty amazing. So obviously I'm super <laughs> enthusiastic, uh, enthusiastic about sharing this one. All right, there is the link. Rachel said, hi, Dr. Kim, I really missed you last week. I'm glad you had a great time at the retreat. Yeah, so we're back on this week. I was flying in that day, and it was funny because I was like, you know what, I might jump on, but let's not plan it. And then here I am moving through customs and like through the airport, and I did have this one like hour, no, two hour period. I'm like, the last thing in the world I'm going to do right now is like tune in and find a spot. And like I was so exhausted. I just got something to eat, but it was funny that I even thought of that. So I'm glad we took the week off because I was traveling. I had an amazing retreat. Um, and this is kind of what I wanted to talk about today, how emotional release doesn't take a lot of time. You know, even if you had decades and decades of decades of um, an old trauma or a stressor or just an experience that wasn't complete where you haven't forgiven or you didn't understand and so you're angry, we can hold these things in our body for decades. And they have been shown scientifically to create all of the chemistry that underlies every major chronic illness people are dying from. Cancer, um, certainly autoimmune disease, um, disrupting your Im immune system so you don't fight off infection, so you end up with a chronic condition like chronic Lyme disease or Epstein-Barr virus instead of just clearing it. Um, but even things like heart disease, diabetes, overweight, depression, things that you know, we've seen like a genetic link but um, our emotional state is what prevents us from moving through that fluidly, is, is what creates the chemistry that turns those genes on and has us exhibit disease. So um, we can clear that and it can happen so quickly, but it might take you know, a while to create the space for that shift to happen. So even if that shift happens in a moment, to create the space and like relax everything, let everything go, go into a deep meditation or do some breathing or come into stillness or like I did, I went to a retreat and it was amazing. And so much can happen in your system when you're in that stillness, you're calm, 
you relaxed, you slow down, you tune within instead of, you know, just kind of like unplug from everything outside. Things can happen really, really fast and you can release decades and decades of old baggage that you've been carrying, creating tension and stress. So the actual release can happen really quickly, but a lot of times we're not making the space for that. And EFT is something that lets all those barriers down and communicates a new message to the brain. It sort of shuts off that fight or flight so that we can get to the stuff we want. Like, I love and embrace myself fully, or I'm ready to have an amazing relationship of love, or I embrace abundance and let my life be easy. Well, all those things are well and good, but if you're doing those affirmations over and over and over against a system that's already plugged into, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go, I'm not enough, I'm not enough, I gotta do more, I gotta do more. <sighs> It won't go in. I went to yoga this morning and it was awesome. And there's a quote from Buddha painted on the wall that was about entering stillness, you know, like the, the most powerful things to enter that stillness and everything can happen. And I don't know exactly what the quote was, but it's something about that, you know, and it said from the Buddha. And I was like, that's what we kind of do is we see these things or it's a bumper sticker and we're like, yeah, 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 stillness. Okay, good. Got it. I'll get to that stillness later. Let me mess around with my life first. Let me do this and let me take care of that. And let me make sure I fix this. Let me complete that. We don't realize that it's now. If we, it's, it, your stillness is a cause, not an effect. It's not that we get to it later. No, it's when we're in the chaos that we need it most. So people will say, you know, if you don't have time to meditate for an hour, meditate for two hours. <laughs> so you think, oh, let me just take 30 seconds because I don't have time. But if you're in that chaos and in that gunk, it's because your system is creating that chaos. You need to center into stillness. And EFT is a really powerful way to just shut all of that off so that the intention can go in, so that the receptivity is there, so that the affirmation or whatever you're doing can be received and you can come into that state of I am abundant everything always takes care of itself life always takes care of me I always have all I need that is a resonance that is an electromagnetic frequency that is a state your body embodies not an idea or belief or a cool bumper sticker but you can't get into that state while you're running all these other programs so we're gonna move into some EFT because it's a really great way to um, Turn all that off so the new stuff can go in. All right, Rachel and Joanne, hello. Carrie, I found you through the Tapping Summit last year. It's awesome. Uh, Jimbo, oh, there's a little sad face. I don't know what that's about. Uh, share more, please. Ragnold, God, oh, good evening from Norway. Elaine, hello from Half Moon Bay, BC, Canada. Woohoo! And hello to Nancy and Linda. Karen, Randy says, I've had the synchronicity lately come up around meeting the parts of me more deeply than ever before, like you talked about in your interview in the Tapping Summit. I felt called to that for a while now, where I get a bit confused is wondering how to tell when it seems like there's so many parts coming up that are hurting and need my attention, or is that trying to take care of, or trying to take care of all those parts, does it, or is, is trying to take care of all those parts actually another part who's avoiding and in <laughs> yeah in chaos um so what i would say is we're not we can look at all the parts but to look at ourselves as a whole it's going to make things a lot easier so they're not really separate and if there's this awareness of like oh something's happening for me right now just put five breaths of attention and awareness let it move through i made a video we just mailed it out today um and i posted it in the mind body community yesterday about how once we do this work, whether it's just the general work I'm sharing or specifically with EFT tapping, you're letting a lot of stuff release. But if it releases against the space of your own judgment or fear or shame, you're gonna be like, oh, no, 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 and like wanna stuff it back down. So just make space, I breathe in, I breathe out. You don't have to deal with it in parts you can just be in the moment, the moment of now, because sometimes this moves so fast, you just released a decade of stuff. You don't even need to go into that part. You just stay with what's moving through. Um, she says, I get short bursts of feeling huge shifts and being really happy. And then there's another part that feels so heavy or sad and can't be happy. Yeah. And it's not about being happy. It's about being present. It will actually transcend happiness. It's like, it's, it's more expansive than happiness, which 
is fleeting and conditional. So there will be this space of like unconditional presence, unconditional love, unconditional yes, all as well. Um, and you'll find that um, when you kind of keep presencing everything that's arising. All right, so Linda, hello from Minneapolis. Tammy, okay, great to see you guys here. So a lot of people who have commented, so I was just zipping through these. But um, I'm going to lead us through some EFT now, and then I'll get back to some more comments. So definitely like share what's this bringing up for you, what are you noticing as we're doing it, and anything else that's coming up for you right now. So very, very simple. There's a sequence to it, but you don't even have to do the sequence. I often just will do one point and tell my body, body, it's okay to let this go. It's okay to feel what you're feeling. So just tap on one of your points. You might feel things shift and still in your body, or you might not and might feel like, well, this is very weird. I don't know if I should be doing this. I don't think it's weird. It never really occurred to me. So I, cause I'm a little weird anyway, but when I've taught people, they're like, well, that's weird. How do you do it in front of other people? And I'll be like taking a walk, walking down the street. And if I feel, this is another point right under the collarbone. If I feel not at ease, I'm just, I do the little tapping body. Everything's okay. It's okay to feel exactly what you're feeling right now. I love you. Inhaling, exhaling. And you'll often feel the breath will go deeper and that there's more relaxation when you do that. So even if you just take a minute. Now for many of us, that's not so available. We're so wound up and we wanna go deeper. So we're gonna do some sequences. So the first piece is, um, and yeah, I do do this in public. I, I've never had anybody look at me strangely. I have had people go, oh my gosh, <laughs> I know who you are. <laughs> I was in a yoga class once doing it because um, there was so much coming up for me. And so rather than ever want to <laughs> clamp it down, I always let my body express it. And someone said something to me after the class, um, but they were really excited about it. So you tap on the karate chop point. You could do one side, you could do both sides, you can do together. This is just feeding back information through your electromagnetic system. I love those little hearts, that's so sweet. To your, all of your nervous system and specifically in the amygdala which registers fight or flight and programs in automatic responses, reactive responses like, oh, I don't like this. Oh, I gotta protect from that. Oh, this is not okay but in a lot of ways that are really dysfunctional and no longer serving us. So you just tap here, even though, and you do a setup phrase, even though I'm so angry, even though I have so much pain, even though I can't stand my mother-in-law, whatever's coming, and I love my mother-in-law actually, we have a great relationship, but whatever is coming up for you, even though, and then whatever you're meeting in this moment. So the first thing that a lot of people do, I don't usually do this, but is to scale where you are. So take a deep breath we're backing up for a moment <sighs> relax your shoulders and breathe what am i feeling right now body how are you hi body here we are and just breathe so then you scale one to ten how severe the pain or the frustration or the anxiety or whatever and i'd love to hear from you like what are you feeling and what's the sc uh, scale of one to ten are you feeling worried about your day? Oh my God, I got this and I got that. Is it all gonna come together? Or sometimes, I mean, there can be anything that the mind is like skitzing out on. If there's physical illness in the body, it's not just the illness or the symptoms, which we could move through usually quickly. It's, oh my God, I'm never gonna get better. Oh my God, I'm scared it's gonna get worse. Or, oh my God, I, what's wrong with me? Why can't I just get over this? There's a layer of emotional or mental stuff that keeps it locked in place. And actually that's, what makes it insufferable, not the physical. I, I will guarantee you when you release the emotional, you'll be like, oh, wow, there's just this physical pain and here it is. And it's not gonna bother you the way it did. And then the pain can actually move and shift because it's just energy in motion. Okay, so with the tapping points, you tap here, even though I'm feeling what I'm feeling and you say it out loud, you could say it to yourself, doesn't really matter. And then you add, I love and accept myself fully. So breathing in and out. And you do this three times, even though I'm feeling what I'm feeling right now. I can't stand it. I'm scared. I don't get it. What's going on? I love and accept myself fully. Breathing, breathing, breathing. You're moving a lot of energy already. And just breathing in the third time, even though I'm feeling everything I'm feeling right now. I choose to allow this moment to be. Good. 
it's really profound how much can shift too. So we'll do the inner eye point. So this is just in that little bony ridge here, right in the front of the eyebrow, one side, both sides, doesn't really matter, but there are two points, tap, tap, tap gently, noticing what I'm feeling in my body. Outer eye, I'm gonna keep it real general. I don't wanna feel what I'm feeling. Good, and just repeating after me, under the eye, letting my body release. under the nose, being willing to feel what I feel. Good, inhaling, exhaling, right under the chin. Um, so we're just moving through these points, under the eye, right underneath the nose, and now we're, we are under the chin. Um, it's okay for me to notice what I feel. Under the collarbone, connecting with my body. Let it all go underneath the arm. And it's kind of a general area. Someone asked yesterday about that point. And it's okay to just be general about it. It's okay, you can repeat after me. It's okay to feel my body. And then top of the head, noticing everything that I'm feeling right now. We're gonna do a little bit more. Breathe in first. And exhale. You might yawn or tear or something as energy starts to move inner eye. Feeling what I feel in my body. Exhale, outer eye, being willing to be present to this. Under the eye, it's okay to be in stillness. Good, under the nose. It's okay to notice what I really feel. Good, under the chin, right on the chin. Maybe I have no idea what I'm feeling. I'm feeling nothing. Because we do often suppress what we feel under the collarbone and that scares me. Under the arm. Maybe I'm not capable of feeling my body anymore. On top of the head, all the ways I have lived so shut down, so in fear. Good, and just breathe in and let everything go. And let your body relax. I definitely want to hear what your experience was. And anyway, even if it's like, this is very strange, or I didn't feel anything. Sometimes you'll feel immediate relief, like, wow, I can't even believe I was upset before. This is totally doable. Um, sometimes things, it turns up the volume because now that we're tuning in, there's like a boulder of emotion that's ready to move and the body's like, oh, finally, I can make space for this. And you'll be like, <gasps> I actually feel more anxious or more whatever that you're feeling more intensely. It's okay to feel it more intensely. So we'll do a little bit more tapping, but I just want to hear Linda says tears. That's beautiful. Um, I mean, obviously that's one of the ways that the body releases energy, emotional energy. Um, most frequently there's yawning, there's tears. There's sometimes we get really fatigued and the body will do this little reboot. Um, a lot of people get really scared when that happens because when we resist it, it keeps going on and on and it can be like a chronic fatigue pattern. Um, but really your body's just trying to shut off and reboot. Like if you upload a great new program on your computer, it tells you turn the computer off and reboot it. And that's like your body's trying to shut off. So you might get like unthinkably, inexplicably tired. So just take five minutes like body, you can have whatever you need and breathe and relax for five minutes. Um, Tammy, yes, tears flowing. Thank you. That's beautiful. Uh, Melanie, gratitude, Dr. Kim. I love EFT. I use it daily. I've not moved my physical symptoms yet. This is Melanie. Okay, awesome. Uh, let's go deeper with that. Share what your physical symptoms are. We're going to tune into somebody's system. Is it whoever wants to lead this? It will assist everyone. Um, so let me feel into a couple people what's going on. Linda says, acknowledgement of, I've been so shut down in fear. I didn't even realize there was truth there. We're going to go with that first because, um, and I'm kind of just hearing it in the, the group of 
people here and people um, who will be listening to that, that it's like, uh, what's this? I don't get it. I don't feel anything. And then this, something's wrong with me. Oh my God, I'm totally shut down and this is not possible. And that's never actually true. So we're going to do a little bit to tune into the body. So even though I can't feel anything in my body, I'm so shut down. Tapping the karate chop point. I choose to love and embrace myself infinitely. Breathing in, breathing out, even though I am scared because I'm noticing I'm so shut down. I choose to embrace all of this exactly as it is. Good, and just repeating out loud after me, even though I don't feel anything happening in my body. Noticing all the ways I've shut down. Good. Stay on the karate chop point. And all the ways I could make this be a big problem. I choose to release this and be in total freedom now. Okay, good. Inner eye. It's okay to feel what I feel. Outer eye. It's okay to notice what I notice. Under the eye. Observing that I don't feel anything under the nose. And all the conclusions I make that mean. Good, right on the chin. It's okay to just be present. Under the collarbone. There is healing power in my attention. Under the, uh, under the arm. Being aware of what's happening in me. On top of the head. Being aware of what's not happening that I think should be happening. Good. Inner eye. It's okay for me to let my body heal. Perfect. Outer eye to let all the old records and programs shut down. Cause that's what EFT is doing is just like the brain is just like, whoosh, because it's taking in new information. Good. Under the eye, there's nothing I need to fix. Awesome. I love the little thumbs up. There's nothing I need to fix. Okay, under the nose. I'm used to judging everything. In the chin. I'm used to operating in fear. Under the collarbone. So when I have awareness of something, I immediately go into fix it mode. Under the collar, under the arm. My body, my brain registers it as a problem. Okay, good, 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 good. On top of the head. So it's good. I don't, I haven't had too much awareness. Inner eye. Because that would have been perceived as just more stuff to fix. Outer eye. I have enough problems already. Under the eye. Shutting this down has really sort of been working for me under the nose when it's all just too much. Good. On the chin. But I am asking for so much more. Ah, under the collarbone. What if I could just let that in? Stay right here on the collarbone. What if feeling what I feel And letting it move through is exactly what I most need. Good. Underneath the arm is exactly what's making the space. Stay right here under the arm for me to receive everything I've been asking for. Okay, good. And then just top of the head. What if I could let it be that easy? Inhaling through the nose. 
except my nose is really clogged up right now. Exhaling. The breathing is really what helps move a lot of the energy. All right, let's tune in. Dima, so fulfilling. Elaine, that was really relaxing and helpful. Linda, I've been shut down to fear. Yep, thank you. Carrie, when I first started tapping, I would always need a tap nap, LOL. <laughs> Melanie, I full tight head. Amy, I did this without any expectation because I didn't feel anything at the time. Afterward, I felt really light. And then I suddenly felt really tired. Yeah, so again, it's awesome to drink like a whole big glass of water and then take like five solid minutes. If you can take 20, take it. It will be the, it'll be the million dollar treatment you didn't even know you were ready for. You don't need to necessarily go to an energy healer, like just you on your bed relaxing for an hour and take that time. You can make your own little magic session to do a little tapping. Body, I love you and lay down on your bed, but at least take like five or 10 minutes just to make space for, okay, body, I don't necessarily have a ton of time that I'm going to do with this right now, but let's at least acknowledge and honor that you want to clear, that you're ready to dump all this stuff that you're ready to release and take five minutes to um, relax your body and breathe. Angela yawning and watering eyes. Coley, Wow, I love that name. Wow, lots of sadness and fear came up. I need to tap more. Yeah, what's coming up with that? Yep, okay, I got it. Nancy, yes, all of those. Okay, we get lots of comments. I'm gonna just go right into the stuff that came up. Uh, so inner eye, it's hard to feel everything that's really in here. <sighs> Outer eye, I don't feel capable of managing it. <sighs> Good, under the eye because I'm not supposed to actually manage it anymore. Under the nose, what if I could just make space? Stay right here under the nose to let this move through. On the chin. To let my body do what it already knows how to do. under the collarbone, making space to welcome everything. Oh, okay, good, 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 stay right there. It is so easy for me to receive. When I've emptied out all I was holding under the arm, it's okay for me to feel this unthinkable fear. Unthinkable hopelessness or despair. Okay, good. Top of the head and even unfinished grief. Okay, breathe in big. Exhaling. No, there's no magic that it has to be through the nose, through the mouth. Just breathe and move. Keep tapping, even if you just tap one point while we're talking here. Um, there is so much grief we often hold because in our society, there's not a lot of space for fear or grief or despair. Um, so I want to just give a couple examples. I had, <laughs> I take my shirt off because it, it, you might be getting warm. That's another thing that happens when you move energy. As soon as I put my hands on somebody and treat them, my body gets super, super hot. So I pretty much dress in layers every single day. <laughs> We had something really intense happen with my little baby, and he's fine. He's great. Uh, but when it happened, it was like, whoa. And, you know, when something happens, that's kind of an emergency. You go into emergency mode. All right, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. I got this. We're good. Okay, I'm going to manage. I'm going to handle. I'm going to call this one. we got to do this thing. And, I, of course, in that moment, you're not meeting the grief of all the other stuff of it, right? So um, I went to the doctor later, and I, sh I had to share the story of what happened. And it was hours later, but it was the first time that I kind of came into what actually happened. And I couldn't, at first I couldn't, I just, like this, because it's happening now again. I couldn't speak it. And I kind of just settled myself, presenced myself, um, let some energy move, breathed. And then I shared it with the um, physician assistant. And this wasn't, this is our society. Like even in a situation like this, there is no space for emotional release. So I went through the story of what happened, kind of choking it up, but just present to let the emotion move because I'm not gonna choke it down. I'm gonna, I'm gonna really feel my grief. It was huge. 
um, cause, cause something happened and, um, you know, he got hurt and I was right there, but my radar wasn't on. And so it was like, Oh my God, how could I let this happen? How could I have not noticed? How could I have not didn't even get on my radar that this was a hazard. And, um, and so there was all the <gasps> about that, but that's when it moved. And so I literally like I shared it and my eyes started tearing and I wanted a hug so badly. Like and I thought maybe she would give me a hug and she's like, okay, good. Got it. And she's like, check the next box. And I, I just said to myself, Kim, you're doing awesome. I love you. This is where you're at. You're doing great. It's fine. Cause I didn't need it from her. There's lots of people who want to give me a hug. Um, so we went through that and he did very well through the day. We got everything we needed. And today I went to yoga and I got on my mat and the teacher said, um, okay, if, <laughs> come into down dog and quite possibly your first down dog of the day. And it's like eight 30 in the morning. And I started laughing. I thought it was hysterical because I'm like, how many dog dogs would I've already done today that, you know, I got up in the fives, but I haven't done any down dogs. So I thought it was just such a funny thing. And so laughter can be a great emotional release, especially if like me, you went to a school where like, you're not supposed to laugh and you're not supposed to talk and you're not supposed to express and you got to be really still and really quiet. I have found through many yoga classes that there's all this unexpressed, giddiness and laughter. And so I'll like kind of inappropriately start breaking into laughter and yoga, sometimes breaking into crying and tears, but it's like, Hey, Kim, make space on your mat, whatever wants to come through. So I made space and I'm like, just cracking up that she said this thing about, Hey, that quite possibly your first down hug of the day. And, um, it all came through, but then right behind it with the flow of the laughter and the expression was the grief. And I just let it flow, started tearing up, started crying, started just breathing really intensely and like making a lot of noise with my breath and making space for my body to release emotion. Now, animals do this all the time. They're like quack, quack, quack on the top of the, you know, the, the lake and the one little duck quacks along with the other and they have a little spat and then they go their separate ways and you see the duck go and they flap out their wings and their wings like shake it off. And then the wings come back in and you have this still little duck coasting along the surface of the water. That duck is not carrying the little squabble. It's not carrying the past, it's in the present. And in the present, it knows like, let me release this energy. Here I am back in stillness and floating. That's what our body asks of us as well. But if we don't make space for emotional release, you're gonna carry this stuff around for freaking decades. And then all of a sudden one day something's gonna happen or you know, maybe someone reminds you of the incident and you're like, oh, and you just fall apart and you're like, this is so inappropriate. So you suppress it, but you're gonna to have to let some of it out sometime. So if you make space for it and don't go into the judgment about this is inappropriate or appropriate, like whatever it wants to release is perfectly appropriate because that's what your body's asking you. So I had like several breaths of like a lot of breathing and it was loud and hey, I just willing to do it, you know? So, and I do think it served everyone around me too, because even if that sometimes makes people uncomfortable, you could feel the room come into a much deeper stillness. So your electromagnetic field and you honoring you is gonna clear the space for others around you. If you don't believe me, test it out and try it. Do some tapping and then go to work. Do some tapping before you pick your kid up from school. Do some tapping, you know, before your date or whatever meeting that you're gonna have. I guarantee you, you'll be amazed at what the difference is in the whole room with everyone else. Okay, Nancy says, yes, I felt all of those. Linda, Tammy, okay, everyone's kind of saying similar things, amazing. Karen, what do you suggest when there's a physical symptom but you're not aware of the mental or emotional associated with it? What you wanna do is feel and tap on the physical. Oh my gosh, this back pain, and like the specifics of it, it started 10 days ago, it's always getting worse, nothing's helping, I went to the chiropractor, or like it started after I did blah, 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 you'll immediately become aware of the emotional. I'm so mad at myself that I did that. I'm so worried it's never gonna go away. I'm so frustrated because I'm dealing with this for so long. You'll get into the emotional. And I've seen that 100% of the time when I've um, done these kinds of things with people who were like, no, 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 there's no emotion, it's just physical. But if it's chronic and persistent and it's bothering you, 100% of the time there is an emotional component keeping it locked in place. Okay. Um, Dima, it works for releasing all the negative emotions of dealing with being in remission of breast cancer and the fear for where it came from and where I'm going. That can bring up a lot. Sometimes it's like your body manifests the cancer so that you'll bring up, it'll bring up the emotions of fear that you've been harboring for decades. Actually, I would venture to say universally that cancer is 
in place to bring up fear and allow the release of fear. There are many, many studies showing that cancer is linked to suppressed fear. Um, and so that now like meeting that mortality or that fear of, of oh my God, just the journey itself. Um, so I would say presence as much as you can what's coming up in the journey. A lot of times people do the opposite. Like, <gasps> let me just get through this. Let me just get through this. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do chemo. I'm gonna do that. And then it's all over and you're like, <sighs> but the fear is still there. And it will usually propagate whatever created the cancer. Cellularly, chemically, we've seen that it does in fact create that chemistry that turns on the genes for cancer that promotes cellular expression of cancer. Um, so if you're willing to meet your fear, you could ask your body to release this, but you really can't ask your body to do something you're not willing to do. So it's a matter of thank you body for showing me how much fear I've really held. I want to honor the space where I have felt fear. You could do that with the tapping. All right, Joanne said that was awesome. Yay. Elaine, oh my goodness, you reminded me of something that happened with my son, now 45 years old, when he was 18 months. I found him on his bed choking. A small train was stuck in his throat. I had no idea it was in his throat. I could just see him all tense. I jumped into rescue mode, and after trying a few things, the train came out. I have no idea why I went to check on him during his nap, but thank you, God, I did not, had not really dealt with this. Beautiful. It's pretty amazing what we can carry and how long we can carry it. And it, it might be something really significant like this, because that's like a massive scare. It might be something like um, when you're five years old and a kid says, I don't want to play with you and you feel hurt and rejected. You don't know. You don't have to psychologically go back to that moment, by the way. Your body will bring up the energy for you of feeling rejected. I'm unwanted. I don't belong. You just tap it. Now, when you tap on that, what you're tapping on is, wow, I'm noticing and presencing the space where I felt I don't belong. You don't have to say that. You can just say, all the ways I don't belong, all the ways I'm in fear, all the ways I secretly hate myself, all the ways I actually really don't want to be here. Whatever it is, you're not affirming. People will say, but I'm affirming a negative thing. That's not what's happening. You are bringing your attention to something that's already in there. Your attention and presence is love. So you're neutralizing this quote unquote negative thing. It's not negative, it's just a thought. You're neutralizing so that it's no longer, you know, this, this rigid thing. Um, but yeah, some things that can be very significant and held for so long. And we're like, I mean, even think of it like birth trauma, you know, you deliver a baby and no one really kind of helps you go through your process of what that was like for you. And for me, it was like three years later, um, maybe it's a couple of years later, I had this massive catharsis of a lot of energy of um, emotional release related to that kind of experience what I experienced when delivering my daughter. And she was, I had to have a C-section and it was really, really <laughs> disconcerting. It was a really hard experience, but um, yeah, you've got to be willing and able to go deep with yourself or you can find a practitioner. If you go online and find a local practitioner, I do a lot of this in my programs, but we do a much, much deeper way of implementing the EFT um, it's not like we just sit there with a one-on-one -on -one and tap all your points. It's much, much more profound, and it's, it's a lot more fluid when we do it in the group. Um, and we will have that available soon in the Embracing Health program. We're going to actually open that up in a very different way so more people can take advantage of that and, and tap along and you know move along and transmute along with the recordings of what we had. So stay tuned for that. Sherry, what do you do when you've tapped for a long time and you still feel contracted? And you're out of time to tap. Okay. One of the things that is really great to sum up your tapping is just put your hands on your heart, body. I love and accept you fully. You want to kind of, you don't have to do that, but you can cap it off with that. Even though I'm feeling everything I'm feeling here, and this is really uncomfortable for me to stop now and march on with my day, I'm willing to let you express. Thank you for sharing with me. Something to actually embrace what's happening and not kind of carry on thinking it's a bad thing. Um, and the other thing is, don't ever tap to feel better. Like, why is my pain gone? I'm tapping, I'm tapping, I'm tapping, I'm getting the emotions, I'm doing this, why don't I feel better? You're not tapping to feel better, you're tapping to embrace love. You're tapping to witness your own pain with love, with allowing, to love yourself more fully. You're tapping to love yourself more fully.
Yes, as you love yourself more fully, your body releases all the shit and you heal, like period, the end. You don't have to do that though. You're not the healer. You don't have to try to be the healer. If your body needs more attention, okay body, I am aware you need more attention. We gotta go to work now, we're gonna do our thing, but I love you and I'll be here with you all day and we'll come back into greater stillness later and do a session tonight before we go to sleep, whatever. It doesn't, doesn't have to look a certain way, but whatever will have you know, like, it's okay. I carry a little bit still. I'm, I'm not quite complete. I'm letting my body know. I love me unconditionally. I'm willing to express. It's okay. That is massive. That is the greatest chemotherapy, greatest powerful medicine that anyone could ever give you. All right, Nicole says, just getting on. I can't wait to watch the replay. Yeah, this was awesome. All right, we're going to complete. Teresa says, oh, grief. Thank you. I've been processing something similar. I didn't know what was next. It's grief. Yeah, insomnia. There's a lot of things that will physicalize, but it's these emotional patterns that we don't even realize we're carrying. So as you do your tapping, be present. Reach out in the mind-body community. Um, if there's more that I can assist you with, certainly we can consider that and look at that. Uh, we do have the retreat, retreat coming up in June, which is going to be unthinkably powerful. I'm very, very excited for what we're creating there in that live group retreat experience. That's on my site. You can subscribe at drkimd.com if you're not already. Um, yeah, Linda, thank you for pointing out fear and cancer. I had no idea. There's a book by Anita Morjani where she went through this really profound experience with end-stage cancer, um, had a near-death experience. It, she became a different person, spiritually connected. Um, but the, the one thing she was having in that experience was like, wow, this is all the fear of me suppressing who I really am. And she was cancer-free after that experience. So really, really great example. Um, can tapping help in depression? In the, on drkimd.com, there is the heal meditation, and there's also an EFT mini course. Um, and I think it's drkimd.com forward slash EFT for that mini course. And I did a session for depression. EFT is incredibly powerful to assist with moving grief and depression. Because the depression is just the way of suppressed grief and not made space to move through it. And so now it's kind of always there to some degree. So I'll visit it over and over and over until I've allowed, really allowed it to come through, which most of us don't make space for. We actually suppress, you know, the depression's bad and wrong and we suppress it instead of realizing, oh, the depression is alerting me where I have unexpressed grief and it's okay. So it has a really, really great session, both the Heal CD and also the EFT course um, have an awesome, awesome um, session for depression because I can really honor the space of that. I've had that many, 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 many years in my life, but I'd never been guided to how do I open that as a beautiful, beautiful thing. It wasn't a beautiful thing. It was a nightmare. It is, it's one of the most beautiful, profound experiences that I've had as far as how it opened me in compassion to humanity. Like, it's an unthinkable, beautiful, beautiful thing in my life now because part of my purpose is in assisting humanity, um, assisting people in expressing the truth of who they are and connecting with the divine within them. Um, and, you know, of course, that relates to health. But I wouldn't be able to do that if I hadn't opened to this within myself. So I will look through the rest of the comments. Jessica, thank you for posting those links for the EFT and the HEAL CD. Um, and... Yeah, I, I'm just sharing so much love with you. There is still the Tapping Summit this week if you'd like to tune into that live. We have the link included here. Um, it's free, but you'll have like each section for just 24 hours. So if you do want that to have in your library, hands down, an awesome, awesome investment. Um, and when you do purchase the set, you'll have that in your library. You'll have the one that I did, which was on the first day for anxiety. And that was really, really moving. We had incredible comments in the community um, yesterday and last night from people who were really moved and went through anxiety. Like, wow, I'm no longer feeling that anxiety just through the tapping that Jessica and I did in the audio. So that was really, really beautifully done. They have a great um, program and how they offer that tapping um, set. So lots of love to you. Those are... Um, sort of resources if you want to move more um, into tapping. But um, I look forward to your questions and assisting you more fully. Bye. I'll see you soon.